dear children welcome to the class 10th video lecture in this video we will continue the geography chapter agriculture and we will discuss today the three cropping seasons in india major food crops like wheat rice and some plantation crops like sugarcane tea coffee and some prominent fiber crops such as jute and cotton in the last part of the video we will discuss the current conditions and challenges of indian agriculture and some government initiatives to improve the indian agriculture so let's get started i hope you remember that that there are three cropping seasons in the country ravi kharif and zaid ravi crops are shown in the winter and they are harvested in the summer season from april and important ravi crops are wheat barley peas grams and mustard seeds north and north west states like punjab haryana himachal pradesh jammu kashmir uttaranchal uttar pradesh they are popular and important for the production of the wheat and other ravi crops so remember that wheat is a ravi crop tell me what is next kharif crop right kharif crops they are grown with the onset of monsoon and are harvested in the winter season so they are grown they are shown during the summer season and are harvested in the winter season the important crops during this season are paddy maize jowar bajra tur moong urad cotton jute groundnut and soya bean so basically the pulses are grown the fodders are grown during this season and important reasons for this are assam west bengal coastal regions orissa andhra pradesh tamil nadu kerala maharashtra why because rice required lot of water in the coastal region it is growing in the recent years paddy has become very important crop in the punjab and haryana next season is zaid in these crops are shown between the ravi and kharif season right and the main crops of this season are watermelon musk melon cucumber fodder etc now we will discuss two major cereal crops or the food crops of the country those are wheat and the rice so the first and the most important food crop of the country is rice let's know what are the geographical conditions required to grow the rice it requires high temperature more than 25 degrees celsius and high humidity so it requires high temperature and high humidity and high rainfall means above 100 cm annually alluvial soil is good for the rice as well as this is also grown in the black soil region so haryana punjab bihar west bengal odisha are the popular rice producing states in the country Do you know that the China is the largest producer of the rice in the world with 35% of the total world rice production so China is the largest producer and India ranks second in the rice production in the country West Bengal is the largest producer of the rice next food crop is wheat wheat is the main food crop in the north and the northwestern part of the country let's see what are the geographical conditions required to grow the wheat temperature it requires cooling cool temperature means because it is a ravi crop so it requires cool temperature average temperature should range between 10 degrees celsius to 15 degrees celsius at the sowing time and at the ripening time at the harvesting time it requires bright sunshine and high temperature rainfall should be moderate as in the case of rice the rainfall should be high but here the rainfall will be moderate 15 to 75 cm annually right and winter rain before the harvesting helps 
in increasing the yield right and soil alluvial soil as like the rice requires alluvial soil and same here for the wheat alluvial soil is good like it is found in the northern plains and the black soil region of the Deccan are also good for growing the wheat Punjab Haryana Uttar Pradesh Bihar Rajasthan Madhya Pradesh these are the major wheat growing states in the country like the rice China is the leading producer of the wheat and India ranks second with 98 million tons wheat production UP is the largest producing state in the country India is the largest producer of the pulses and largest consumer as well pulses are leguminous crops they are grown as rotational crops because they have the capacity to fix the nitrogen in the soil so they help in restoring the fertility of the soil pulses are rich in protein so eat every day and they are the major source of protein for everyone the good fact is this that the pulses need less moisture they can survive in the dry conditions so they can be grown in the dry areas in all types of soil they can be grown temperature should range between 25 degrees celsius to 30 degrees celsius major producing states in the country are punjab haryana uttar pradesh bihar rajasthan and madhya pradesh so basically the northern part of the country is producing the pulses so now it's tea time tea is aromatic most popular and the main beverage crop of the country india is the second largest producer of the tea after china do you know what is the most popular beverage crop after plain water yes the answer is tree it grows well in the tropical and subtropical climate it means that warm and moist and frost free climate is good for it frost like the sugar cane it is danger for the tea the temperature should range between 20 degrees celsius to 30 degrees celsius and the rainfall should range between 150 to 250 centimeters deep fertile and well drained soil is good stagnant water is very harmful for the roots of the tea plant it is grown on the hills of the Assam in the tea states. Assam is the largest producer of the tea in the country and China is the largest producer of the tea in the world. On the other hand, coffee like tea is grown on the hills same and the hills are in the Karnataka, the Baba Pundan hills in Karnataka and the Nilgiri hills are popular for the tea. It requires heat humidity and abundant rainfall what coffee coffee requires heat humidity and abundant rainfall and same the temperature should range between 25 to 30 degrees celsius and the rainfall should range between 150 to 250 centimeters now let's discuss rubber and the sugar cane both are plantation in the cash crops so the first is the rubber rubber is an important industrial raw material with no tires toys tubes of vehicles and various products are made from the natural rubber it is grown in the tropical region like in the thailand malaysia indonesia and in the subtropical areas as well so it is grown in the tropical and subtropical areas it requires moist and humid climate as usual with the rainfall more than 200 centimeters and the temperature above 25 degrees celsius rubber is mainly grown in kerala and tamil nadu and the recent years thailand became the largest producer of the rubber in the world and kerala ranks one in india with 90 percent of india's rubber production you can grow sugar cane from the stem all around the year. India is the largest consumer of the sugar in the world. Sugar cane is a tropical and subtropical crop. Obviously, it requires hot and humid climate. Like for the tea and coffee, frost is dangerous. In the same way, frost is injurious for the plant, for the sugar cane plant. Rainfall before the ripening 
decreases sucrose content in the sugar cane. The temperature should range between 21 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius. Rainfall should be between 75 centimeters to 100 centimeters. Uttar Pradesh means the northern plains where the alluvial soil is found that area is good for growing the sugar cane as well as Maharashtra ranks one in the India in the sugar cane production so the black soil of the Deccan is also good for growing the sugar cane in the country. Brazil is the largest producer of the sugar cane traditionally according to your book but in 2018, India became the largest producer of the sugar cane in the world. Jute, cotton, hemp, natural silk, flax, these all are fiber crops and the cash crops. These fiber crops are grown to make paper, cloth, rope and different varieties of things. They have very high concentration of the cellulose in them. You know the natural silk is a fiber. It is not obtained directly from the crop. In this the silk is obtained from the cocoons of the silkworm which are reared on the mulberry trees. And the science of rearing and cultivating the silk is called sericulture. Do you know that the Bhagalpur in Bihar is known as the Silk City of India? So the first and the most important fiber crop of the country is the cotton. India is the largest producer of the cotton in the world and Gujarat is the largest producer of the cotton in the country. Madhya Pradesh Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh. Just see the map. These are the states which produce the cotton. You know it that the cotton is a kharif crop. It requires high and humid climate. And the frost again is dangerous for it. It requires bright sunlight and light rainfall. The suitable soil for growing cotton is the black soil which is also known as regur or the cotton soil. Jute which is known as the golden fiber is the second most important fiber crop of India. It is grown in the West Bengal, Bihar, Assam, and Uriza and Meghalaya basically in the coastal regions just see the map especially the Hooghly Basin is the leading jute producing area in the country it grows well in the flood plains <coughs> in the Khadar plains where soil is well drained and fertile it requires high temperature around 30 degrees Celsius and high rainfall around 150 centimeters. It is labor intensive crop because it requires labor for processing the jute fibers. Gunny bags, mats, ropes, yarn, carpets and other artificial artifacts are made with it. Now we are heading towards the end of the chapter and here we will discuss the few discuss the features of Indian agriculture which is the backbone of Indian economy the primary activity one of the oldest economic activity of the human being India 60% of the population around two-thirds of the population is depending on the agriculture for their livelihood and the contribution of the agriculture in the GDP is around 18% India's population is increasing day by day. India ranks 2 in terms of population and land cannot be increased so the land size in the country are small and scattered and around 33% of the land holdings are less than 1 hectare in size. India's population 
India's farmers still depend on the uh, monsoons they do the subsistence farming their land holdings are smaller so their investment their productivity their output everything is low and they face poverty and these farmers do the subsistence farming they do they are not able to grow for the market they grow for themselves for their family to survive so indian farming is a subsistence farming now we will try to find out the causes of the decline in the food production india's food production is continuously decreasing farmers like to grow the cash crops they want money and there is a gradual shift from the food crops to the cash crops farmers are growing sugarcane coffee tea cotton jute which are cash crops next reason is the urbanization you know population is increasing we need more area for the settlement so the area under the crop production area under the food crop production in the country has reduced and this has reduced the food production in the country next the power the productivity of the land is also declining due to the heavy use of the chemical fertilizers farmers are using more and more chemical fertilizers to earn and to get the more production but they do not know in the long run these heavy use of chemical fertilizers reduces the farm productivity this is why india's food production is reducing earlier after the independence government began government began giving the subsidy on the fertilizers on the diesel on different kind of inputs but nowadays government has changed its attitude and government has decreased the subsidies on the inputs so this has increased the cost of production this has increased the marginal savings for the farmers so there these are the challenges and are the causes of decline in the food production in the country now we will know the indian government initiatives to improve the farming activity to improve the production in the country after the independence government began it is institutional reforms like it abolished the zamindari system which was introduced by the britishers right it consolidated the land holdings and government began giving the subsidies over the inputs i told you on the fertilizers on the diesel on seeds government also started giving free hiv seeds during the green revolution training and the seminars also are conducted for the farmers in the country so that they can be more knowledgeable they can produce more government has established various agricultural universities research centers government established nabar rural banks to uh, to improve the rural infrastructure to improve the research in the agriculture agricultural field high risk can be insured government has introduced various schemes of insurance for insuring the high risk crops government has set up the banks i told you uh, rrb regional rural bank nabard and government also introduced during the time of indira gandhi the green revolution it had a lot of positive impact you can write it and government in 1998 government introduced the kisan credit card with this card the farmers the marginal small farmers can take the short term loan or soft loans easy loans for the agricultural needs so we have reached at the end of the lesson thanks see you in the next video